Um, yeah, that's very interesting. All right, next question is coming from Cade in Sarasota, Florida, <clears throat> uh, a lefty knuckleballer. How about that? Um, yeah, how can I help my catcher learn to catch me? Then we even have a hashtag knuckleball problems on this one. <laughs> okay, so how can he help his catcher to catch his knuckleball? Yes. That's the question. Yeah, okay. Well, it's tough for the for the pitcher to help the catcher catch it. I mean, it's, it, it, and when the guy that's been the best for me is Josh Tolley. He's really made a, a, a living being able to catch it. You know, he uh, he's very, very good. And what he does is, you know, you have to kind of convince yourself that it's okay to, to not go out and stick the pitch. If you try to stick the pitch for a strike, you're going to miss it because it's going to break right as you're going out to get it. So what he does, and most guys that receive it well um, are guys that have really good hand-eye coordination, that are good athletes, that let the ball come to them as deep as they can. Um, the deeper, the better. And they also set up with a very relaxed um, a relaxed approach. So if you'll notice, when I pitch, Josh Coley's not ever given me a target. He's not, he's not ever, like, sticking his glove out, like, throw it right here, you know, like he would if I was throwing a fastball away. He's got his hands kind of just hanging down in front of his body, real loosey-goosey, so that he can really feel rhythmically like he can catch anything. Um, and then I just I aim for the same place every time I throw it, and that's about two balls above the catcher's mask. And so I don't need him to put up a target. I just need him to catch it. And so that helps. Um, a guy who can can kind of convince himself that all those things are okay. Interesting. So you you don't try to throw side to side on the plate. No, no, I, I never I never throw trying to hit a specific location. I care about altitude. I care about height. Um, the ball is going to a good knuckle ball is going to do what it's going to do, and so it's it's kind of frivolous to try to pick a corner. But what you can kind of control is uh, the height. Um, I know that if I throw a good one, which means I throw one that probably rotates a quarter of a revolution from the time it leaves my hand to the catcher's net, um, then it's going to go down some direction. I just don't know which direction. Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, all right, Len from Saugus, Massachusetts. Uh, his question is, how hard was the transition from a power pitcher to a knuckleball pitcher, and how did you mentally prepare um, for this change in your career? Well, it, it it was hard in the sense that my identity, my whole career, had been a power pitcher, you know, and so, but it was kind of easy in the sense that I could no longer generate the velocities as a conventional pitcher that I could when I was younger. So I had I had to find out. I had to find another way way to do it, right? So um, it, the decision was made pretty clear to me because I didn't have what it took at the big league level anymore as a conventional pitcher. I had, if I wanted to stay in the big leagues, to switch. Um, so that, that decision was kind of made for me. And it, the thing that became very difficult was trying to forget who I was as a power pitcher and relearn a mechanic that could produce a consistent knuckleball. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of unlearning what you had learned over the first 20 years of your pitching career and, and relearning a technique that's much different. It would be akin to a guy who had hit right-handed his whole career and then all of a sudden he's going to be a switch hitter. You know, it's just, it's tough. It's really difficult to do. Um, but I had, a, like, like uh, one of your previous um you know, queries was about who can help. Well, I had a lot of great help. You know, I had Tim Wakefield and Phil Necro and Joe, you know, Phil Necro and Charlie Huff. So I had a lot of good help. Absolutely. It's time for-